For years, I have covered stories with Child Protective Services, or CPS. Not easy to do because most of the time they tell us that because of confidentiality, they cannot give us an update on specific cases or those numbers that we seek to find out the truth about what is going on with the system. But last week, it was a little different when a 12-year-old child arrived here at the TV station asking us for help. But last week, one of those children ended up right here at our TV stations. And what happened next was my realization of the frustrations many go through when asking the system for help, even if you are the media. On Tuesday, a 12-year-old boy arrived at the station with a good Samaritan who has over the weeks allowed him on several locations to stay in their home while waiting for CPS and the police to show up at their home. We will call the child Sean. Not knowing what to do with him, they came here to our station. The child asked me to help him after allegedly suffering mental and physical abuse for years at the hand of his guardian. You no, know, we haven't been on the same page for a very long time. And that started when she made me eat vomit when I was like six or seven. And the abuse he claims has gotten worse. All of a sudden she just started hating me. She didn't like me. She threatened me with the bat. She made me sleep two times outside. She told me that she hated me and that she didn't want me at her house no more. But every time he runs away, sleeping out on the streets or outside of the Good Samaritan's home, CPS and authorities return the child to the guardian. The child told us his punishment can also include shaving all of his hair off since the guardian allegedly has been told by him that he is bullied at school when he comes in like that. I ran away because she she does this things to me and I told her that um, that I get bullied because she likes to cut my hair but and I told her that I get bullied because of it and she said that that just to fight him and I said I can't because then I'm gonna get in trouble and she said it doesn't matter and so I get bullied every day that I'm at school because of my hair. Sean also admitted to us he has tried to die by suicide twice since he keeps getting returned to the same guardian's home. Fox SA has confirmed the allegations through numerous state sources. Like if I'm around people, like if I'm with them, then she acts all innocent. But as soon as they leave, she's yelling at me. And so I just want to like a better life and I already talked to CBS cops. I made files, I made reports and they don't do nothing. You feel like nobody's helping you? No one is helping me. I had to sleep outside. We called the Bear County Sheriff's Office to report that the child was here. We also contacted the Regional Director for Child Protective Services, Leticia Lozano, to try and get help. Lozano asked who I was and notified me via text she was in a meeting. I explained the situation but never heard back. We asked State Representative Liz Campos of San Antonio, who sits on the Health and Human Services Committee that oversees CPS, if this was the correct way for the director to handle this. While the child was still at the station, we also contacted State Representative John Luhan of San Antonio, who's the vice chair of the Juvenile Justice and Family Issues Committee. State Representative, when you were able to speak to the child who was here at the station, what was your impression? What was your takeaway? Well, immediately sadness for the whole situation, right? For anybody to be in that situation, but what a very articulate young man. Uh, obviously, he was scared, and um, right away, I'm just thinking, man, how do, how do we make this situation better? When a child is, tries to commit suicide twice, what does that say? What kind of family is that? What kind of environment? No one should live in those type of conditions, and, and the sad part is it's happening. We mean well, but there is no good game plan of how to address the whole family. Once Bear County Sheriff's investigators showed up, they took a statement and took the child to Child Safe. 
11 hours later, I got a call from the Guardian after my personal cell phone was given to them on a piece of paper. The next day, Sean ran away again and ended up at the Good Samaritan's home. This time, he made an outcry to police and said that he will either die by suicide or kill his guardian if he is returned to the home. Fox SA contacted CPS and due to their confidentiality rules, could not give us a comment on his case. We contacted the district attorney's office to see if Sean's case or the numerous CPS reports that have allegedly been made by numerous people have ever gotten to them. They sent us a statement that said, our office promptly reviews any cases where court action is sought by CPS. Texas law limits disclosure of additional information. As of today, we're told Sean is still at a local mental health facility after his claim was taken seriously by authorities. We will stay on top of this case. Jamie Virgen, Fox SA.